Hello, everyone. Welcome to the very first episode of Pierce the Heart Lessons. I'm your host and teacher, Joanne Pierce. As we work on projects together, ranging from arts and crafts to museum quality pieces, I plan to make learning the basics and proper technique a lot of fun. So come on in. Let's get to work. Today I'm going to show you how to draw a portrait of a horse's head and neck. This is a drawing I made of one of my favorite four-legged friends. We're going to learn how to create a line drawing into a value drawing. I'd like to talk to you about the supplies that you're going to need to do this drawing. You're going to need graphite pencils. They come in sets. Erasers, make sure they're clean a brush to brush away the eraser crumbs. We don't want to use our hand. The erasers that we need are a polymer eraser and a kneaded eraser. So, you'll see here I have some green painter's tape on my paper. I like to measure off a standard size. I have measured off an area of 16 by 20. To begin our drawing, I'd like to show you how I want you to hold your pencil. We're going to hold the pencil like this, very loosely. And we want to imagine that there's a string at our elbow and that somebody is pulling our elbow. We want to be very loose. We do not want to be tight when we start. I start all my portraits with ovals, an oval for the neck. and an oval for the head. I'm drawing these lines very dark so the camera can see them, but at home you would draw these lines very lightly. I'm the two ovals and I'm going to make a line for the ears. What I've just drawn is something called a gesture. The gesture is the direction that things are going in your piece. So the neck is going this way, the head is going this way. After I'm happy with my gesture, I then go to what's called the contour. Contour is just another name for the outline. Looking up at my subject matter, which you should do often, don't try to remember what you're drawing, look at what you're drawing. I'm going to hold the pencil like as if you're writing and I'm going to take a look at my subject. I'm going to go down the neck. Again, I'm drawing rather dark, but at home you would do this much lighter. I'm going to make an indication of the ears, come down the opposite eye, down the nose, little indication of the halter, muzzle, chin to cheek. Again, we're not, don't have to be perfect yet. And then the, down the neck to the shoulder. Next, it's time to find the location of our details. And our details are our features of our horse, the ears, the eye, the nostril. It's very tempting to start with detail when you're drawing, but you can't. You have to start this way. Let's say I started working on the eye, and I spent an hour, and the eye was perfect. But if it wasn't in the right location, I have to redo it. So right now, I'm going to show you how to lay in the location of the features and we'll get back to detail later. So the cheekbone of the horse is a great way to measure from. I know you have to measure in art. So you go up from the cheek. When we go up from the cheek like this, this is usually where the eye is. I'm going to do a light circle there. 
Also, when we go up from the cheek and we come around here is usually where the ear begins. Now, see how I did this light indication here? That probably was not the right location. That's why we draw lightly and then we can erase that. I'm not going to do a lot of detail on these features yet. We just want to find the locations and make sure they're correct. While I'm up here at the ear, going, go, going to go across the forelock and make a little indication of this ear. Again, not worrying about the detail too much. And we come down and we're at the halter. It's great to have a halter or a bridle on a horse subject that you're drawing because it can help your, your horse's head look very round and um, not flat. I'm going to do a light line for the halter, a light line for the cheek piece, which then brings me down to the nostril. I like to do a lowercase d to just indicate the nostril. This area of the horse is confusing to people um, because we have the muzzle, the upper lip, a lower lip, and the chin. A lot of people forget that area when they're doing a portrait, so don't forget that area. Okay. In addition to finding the correct location of this eye, I want you to look back up at the subject matter. I like to hold my pencil to see if the eyes are completely straight or if they're angled as such. So this, in this head, it's slightly down from the other eye. At this time, I'm going to make a line to help me with my reference. The horse's head has many planes. The skeletal structure is a good thing to learn when you're going to draw horse portraits. You don't need to learn every ligament, every muscle like a veterinarian would need to learn, but I'd like you to know a little bit about the skeletal structure. It will help your drawing be three-dimensional. So there are some basic planes on the horse's head. The triangle at the top of the head, a rectangle down to the nose, a round plane here, and a half circle flat pane here at the cheek. If you're fortunate enough to have a horse or be around horses, I want you to think about these planes when you're grooming. And when you're grooming, I want you to think about your drawing. Now's a good time to step back from our drawing and look at it from a distance. It's a very good practice to get into because after a, wi a while, our eyes can't see. Another good thing to do is to turn your work upside down or put it in front of a mirror. If you have made any mistakes, they will be obvious. With today's technology, I like to take a picture with my phone. For some reason, when I look at, the picture, at my drawing on my phone, I can see if I've made any mistakes. So when we come back, we're going to be adding the details of our horse, the features. See you soon.